Please pray with me. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For 244 years, we've been celebrating American independence on the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July weekend, St. Andrews, and happy 4th of July weekend, St. Michael's. I drove to work on Tuesday morning this week, and I was so happy to see Washington Street all decked out with American flags on either side of the street, flag after flag after flag fluttering in the breeze. I love towns that know how to celebrate the 4th of July. Those flags reminded me of the 4th of July celebrations of my own childhood in a small town in upstate New York. Those celebrations were always big and important events for our town and for my family. We had parades which would include Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, marching bands and veterans. One year I was a flag bearer at the front of the parade wearing a smart pair of white gloves. And on the 4th of July, our town would always have a weekend crafts fair on the village green. And people would stroll around enjoying all the art and all the jewelry. And on the actual 4th of July itself, we'd hold a town auction to raise money for charities. One year, my sister made her first red velvet cake and donated it to the charity auction. And her cake got caught in a bidding war between my dad and my uncle. They went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to the amusement of the crowd until her cake raised more money than anyone else's cake that year. She was 13 at the time and our extended family was so proud that she'd baked the cake and so proud that she'd donated it to the charity auction and we were particularly pleased to bring it back home to add it to the dessert table that night. My dad was not going to let my uncle go home with my sister's cake. On the 4th of July, we always had a big party in our backyard that lasted all afternoon with all kinds of food that belong in a 4th of July backyard party. Cold ham, baked beans, endless side salads and side dishes. And my mother would always bake a sheet cake that would have blueberries and raspberries on the top, resembling an American flag. In my childhood, those days seemed to run on forever until it was finally time to drive to the lake at 9.30 at night and to watch the fireworks explode over the water. At 10.15 or 10.30, cars would honk their approval and then we would all finally go home. The day finally ended. In those years of my childhood, and now, this weekend, this nation celebrates the 4th of July to remember that we are all citizens of, or aspiring to be citizens of, the United States of America. We're celebrating to remember that we are living in a country which, while imperfect, is still the best and most hopeful country on the planet. Our founders dared to dream of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness with equal representation and equal justice under the law. And every generation since has expanded and deepened that American dream, our American dream. Sometimes that expansion has been extremely painful as the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s have taught us. But the vision of our nation the goals of justice, freedom, and equality for all, those are bold and worthy dreams. And it's our commitment to these visions that makes our country great. On each 4th of July, it's important for us to remember the powerful vision of our founders. And it's equally important for us to claim those visions as our own. Just as our Christian faith is a living faith which needs our participation to flourish on this earth. So too, our American democracy is a living social contract, needing our vision and our actions as citizens 
to sustain it. We need to celebrate our founding this weekend, but we also need to acknowledge our nation's struggles. We all know that we're living in an extremely challenging time as we simultaneously engage a world pandemic, the economic insecurity which follows it, and an upheaval in our nation's expectations for what liberty and justice for all should look like in the 21st century. There is expectation and disillusionment on all sides of these three struggles as we tackle all three of them simultaneously. Our nation's going through a period of reckoning and we aren't finished yet. We're still engaging the pandemic, the economic struggle, the social unrest. When there is so much uncertainty about how our country will move forward, I want to remind myself and all of us that we can draw strength and courage from another country, from another kingdom. We Christian Americans can be said to belong to two countries, the United States of America and the kingdom of God. We belong to both. We live and move and have our being in both. So when we're struggling and the, turbulence are stru are, and the struggles are turbulent in one country, we can turn to the sustaining grace and love and resilience of God's kingdom. These struggles were engaging, all three of them. They need our authentic voices. They need our love and our commitment. They need our readiness to listen to voices which are different from our own. Both kingdom and country need each of us to resist turning a fellow citizen into an enemy, even as we gain clarity about the virus, the financial hardships, the social failures we need to confront. As a wise Christian once observed, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. In this morning's gospel, we're reminded of the unending and unconditional love Jesus has for us. There is never a time when he is not longing for us to find and build abundant life for ourselves, for our neighbors, for the stranger in our midst. The words he shares with us this morning are some of the most comforting words in all of scripture. Come to me all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our invitation this Sunday is to take up Jesus's invitation. We are invited to find rest, and hope, courage, and resiliency in our faith as we walk through these next few months. May we each do just that, giving thanks for all that is good in our country and in our lives, and making room for the challenges and the transformation that will be required of us as this year continues to unfold. Amen.